This is the Greek Word of the Day with James Gregory. Welcome. You're watching the Greek Word of the Day. Today we have epi. Epi, it's a preposition. Now it can be used with the genitive, it can be used with the dative, it can be used with the accusative. It's a little flexible. Now, uh, in the genitive, it means on, over, when. In the dative, it means on the basis of, at. In the accusative, it can be, uh, mean on, to, against. Now, notice it's epi, and then in parentheses, I've got ep and f. That's because depending on the following word, and if it starts with a vowel, uh, it might shorten to ep, or it might shorten to f. So just be aware. You don't need to know the technical terms. Mounts has it in the vocabulary, but you don't need to know that. You just need to be able to recognize it. That's what's important. So when you see ep, or when you see f, now you know you're dealing with epi. Okay? Now, looking at bdag, this is a preposition, so it's got a lot of different glosses. The basic meaning, the basic idea of epi is upon. This is the opposite of epo. Okay? Um, one gloss, it could mean a marker of location or surface, and it answers the question, where? You would translate it on, upon, or near. So with the genitive, it's marking a position on a surface, like on the earth, uh, epitis geese, on the earth. Uh, with the dative, it can be uh, suggesting uh, conti conti contiguity, conti conti how do you pronounce that word? Dang it! Contiguity? I actually don't know how to, I've never seen this word. Con contiguity? That's weird. Actually, I feel like I know Greek better than I do English. That's sad. I'm a English first language. So, contiguous? Con cont contiguity? I don't know. Con mm, I'm embarrassed. Uh, so, dative suggesting some sort of contiguousness, contiguity, on, in, above. It answers the question, where? So the same question we saw before, but now we're dealing with the dative, potentially. It can answer the question, whither. We saw this yesterday. I still don't quite understand the word, whither. Uh, translated on or upon. And it's used with verbs that indicate a direction, okay? Like, build upon something. Um, it could be with the accusative, answering the question where as well, uh, and translated on or over. Uh, for example, sleep on something. Uh, it could be translated uh, at, like uh, epi to avto, at the same place. Otherwise, translated simply together. Uh, it could be translated with the accusative this way as at, by, near someone, uh, or near something. Okay? So that's the first gloss. Second gloss is a marker of presence or occurrence near an object or area. Translated at, near. With the genitive, it's of immediate proximity to things. At, near. With the dative, it's of immediate proximity at, near. There's no instances listed here of the accusative. The third gloss, marker of involvement in an official proceeding, translated before. So with the genitive of persons, especially in the language of lawsuits, uh, we see, for example, Matthew 28, 14, epi tu igemonos, uh, in the governor's presence. Okay? Um, and generally speaking, this one is simply in someone's presence. 
Now, uh, the fourth gloss is marker of movement to or contact with a goal. You translate it toward, in direction of, on. With the genitive, it's marking contact with the goal that is reached. Answering the question, whither. Again, I don't understand this word, whither. I need to learn me some old English. I don't know. I'm not sure what to make of that. Toward, on, at. It's used with verbs of motion. With the accusative, it can do one of, uh, let's see, three, four, five, five different things. So the accusative is a bit more flexible. One is uh, specifying direction. Again, using verbs of motion. Of motion that takes a particular direction. So you translate it to or toward. It could be from one point to another. So you would translate it across, over, where motion is implied. Uh, think of like to walk, peripatine. Um, of a goal attained. So you translate it on, upon someone or something. Uh, of closeness to something or someone. So you translate it to, up to, even you might translate it in the neighborhood of. Uh, it could be in imagery of goal or objective to. So translate it to or toward. The fifth gloss, it could be a marker of manner. Okay, so now it's corresponding to an adverb used with the dative, uh, where it helps show the manner in which the action is being completed. Uh, so what's a good example here? So what it's doing is it's using the dative and then taking some sort of some sort of noun and turning it into an adverb. It's really weird. But uh, I only see one example of it in the New Testament in that second Corinthians 9:6. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, the sixth gloss is a marker of basis for a state of being, an action or result, translated on, used with the dative. So ep arto zine, live on bread, is an example. But it could also be with verbs of believing, hoping, and trusting. Uh, so... Uh, you got to look for those as well. It could also be after verbs which express feelings and opinions. So you translate it at, because of, from, with. The seventh gloss, and we're not done, uh, could be a marker of addition to what is already in existence. Translated to, in addition to, also used with the dative. Uh, so... Leapy, epi, leapy, grief upon grief. So it kind of builds on, it, on itself. Uh, the eighth gloss, marker of perspective. So it can be translated in consideration of, in regard to, on the basis of, concerning, about. It's used with the genitive. Uh, let's see, what's a good example here? Um, epidio e trion martyron on the evidence of two or three witnesses uh, the ninth gloss could be a marker of power authority control of or over someone or something translated over and this could be in the genitive dative or accusative 
The tenth gloss could be a marker of legal proceeding, translated before, used with the accusative. Um, this is especially true uh, of language of the law courts. Uh, so when you're dealing with governors, kings, you're probably going to see this. The eleventh gloss, marker of purpose, goal, result, translated to or for, used with the accusative. Uh, the twelfth gloss, and we still have more. Uh, it could be a marker of hostile opposition, translated against. It could be used with the dative or with the accusative. Thirteenth gloss, marker of number or measure, used with the accusative. So three times, more than once. It could be in a kind of a general sense, to a great extent. Uh, so a number or measure. Fourteenth gloss, marker indicating the one to whom, for whom, or about whom something is done. Translated to, on, about. It's used with the dative, used with the accusative. The fifteenth gloss and we still have more a marker of feelings directed toward someone in on for toward used with the accusative um 16th gloss marker of object or purpose with dative in reference to something okay um this one could be translated for it could be translated um, for, but in the sense of so that. The 17th gloss, marker in India, idiom of authorization, used with the date of, it's a formula, epi to onomati tinos, in the name of someone. And this is combined with many different verbs, like Guinness they, um to become on um let's see what would be another one um baptizing to baptize so various verbs use this for authorization 18th gloss marker of temporal associations in the time of at on Four. This can be used with the genitive, used with the dative, used with the accusative. And that is it. This is one of the great workhorses of the New Testament. So that's why there's a lot of various usages. Best thing to do when you come to this word, look it up. Look it up. Try and find something more specific in BDAG and it's going to help you narrow down how to translate it. But, if you are in a pinch, just translate it as a pawn. That's the most general sense. If you have a little bit more spare time, then you know genitive is on, over, or when. Dative is on the basis of, or at. And accusative is on, to, against. If you still have more time to research it, then look it up in BDAG and narrow it down out of your 18 choices using context, which is critical, right? And that's going to help you determine more, more specifically what you would translate it as. All right. So thanks for joining for today's Greek word of the day. This was a really long one, but that's okay. Uh, it's important to understand all of these nuances so that uh, when you do come to it and you do your research, you can figure it out. But hit subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Come back again tomorrow, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.